A Voice for Men's editor-at-large, Erin Pizzi, founded the first ever women's shelter in 1971, and she is widely revered in the men's rights community. Because you see, what I knew from the beginning, most domestic violence is consensual. Both are involved. Sometimes one's the perpetrator, the other plays the victim, then it crosses over. It's not, it's not as though it's just all men or all women. It's both. That is triggery! All right, we are back. I'm Michael. And I'm Lakia. And this is The, the Voice, Voice of, of Reason. Reason. So this is part seven of the documentary, The Red Pill. Any initial thoughts going into this? Let's just do it. Let's just get it. It several times, you know, and, and I never got any help. I went to the police still bleeding a couple of times. Um, and one police officer said, uh, I'll, I'll never forget this. He said, if she starts hitting you again, you better get out of there fast because if she just breaks a fingernail trying to hit you, we'll arrest you. I mean, I can't tell you at this point how many guys I've talked to who are like, yeah, you know, she stabbed me and they put me in jail. Mm -hmm. Not only are there endless studies that show women are just as violent as men are, when I would talk about it, invariably, men would start coming out of the woodwork with stories. Mm. Stories they were afraid to tell. Stories that they got laughed at for. Stories that they got blamed for. Mm -hmm. it's, it's hideous. This is not flattering to men to talk about men's vulnerabilities. No. To talk about the ways that they are not strong and that they, they are, well, weak um and to be honest about it, it's not flattering uh, a solution for both genders is that we need to be able to recognize how men are vulnerable and we need to be able to recognize how women are actors uh, because we have a huge blind spot especially when women do bad things mm -hmm. big time <laughs> my best friend that i grew up with since kindergarten was being physically abused by his wife, who he'd been married to for 20 years. She'll break glass and throw it at him, punch him. I've seen it just happen spontaneously, and it was frequent. And he's bigger than her, but he didn't want to hit her. And he didn't want the children, they had three minor children, he didn't want them seeing this at all. So he would usually just go outside because they would be glass breaking or things being smashed or yelling and he knew that the neighbors might think it's him so he would go outside so the neighbors can see what's happening eventually i said look you're gonna need you need professional help and so does she and maybe the kids do too so i called a bunch of domestic violence shelters i i just looked around online and i called but every place that i called said we don't help men we don't help male men at all and i started becoming curious about why that was because i learned that these were state-funded shelters mm. and i know that men pay at least half of the taxes that fund these shelters if they're state funded and i just was wondering why so basically I, there was no place to take him and it, it just continued the problem just kept going mm. Wow. What do you think about that situation? It is. <laughs> it's men, sad, man, men because... Being in situations where they're the victim of abuse. You know, women, right. even though women are smaller than men, a woman can pick up a, a, a knife. Mm -hmm. A woman can pick up a skillet. A woman can pick up a bat. Mm -hmm. A woman can pick up a gun. Mm -hmm. And some of these situations, you see these scars, like mm -hmm. they're clearly were stabbed with a knife mm -hmm. or... Or something along those lines. Like a, a woman can attack you in your sleep. A dumbbell. Like, like let's let's not that's yeah, let's not act like right. because women are smaller that they're less dangerous. Right. I mean it was surprising to me that he couldn't find anywhere for his friend to go be and the problem was, oh, they're not taking men and it's like these are state funded domestic shelters. Domestic yeah. violence shelters. Right. Why can't the man go in and seek shelter or seek help? They don't care about men. <laughs> they don't care about men. Yeah, it's just, it is what it is. 
In the United States, there are over 2,000 domestic violence shelters. <clears throat> all of them serve female victims, and nearly all of them turn away male victims. In fact, as of 2016, there's only a single domestic violence shelter for men. Mm. My initial One. reaction was that there needed to be thousands more women shelters because that many more women are being battered. But as it turns out, one in three women and one in four men will be victims of physical violence by an intimate partner in their lifetime. Sure, there's a slight majority of female victims, but how can that excuse denying men help? Couldn't this be considered gender discrimination? You think? Think of it this way. Roughly 78% of all suicides are men. If Whew. suicide prevention services only served men, wouldn't we see the gender discrimination immediately? If That's a good point. If there are over 2,000 women shelters that turn away men, and only one shelter for men, Obviously, the resources don't match the need. Mm -hmm. How are you involved in the men's rights movement? Well, from the very beginning, when I first opened the refuge, which was in 1971 in Chiswick in London, uh, almost as soon as I took the women in, I got a house for men. A Voice for Men's editor-at-large, Aaron Pizzi, founded the first ever women's shelter in 1971, and she is widely revered in the men's rights community. Because you see, what I knew from the beginning, most domestic violence is consensual. Both are involved. Sometimes one's the perpetrator, the other plays the victim, then it crosses over. It's not, it's not as though it's just all men or all women, it's both and occasionally innocent victims, very innocent. Battered children grow up to batter, that's what I learned, whether it be a man or a woman. And I now know that if a woman comes in with a history of violence in her own childhood, the chances are she will be probably violent to her children and she will want to live on this knife edge of crisis and danger. I haven't been allowed to speak, that's the difficulty. Why is that? Because I'm completely barred from all conferences. I, I'm not allowed to walk up the step of my own refuge. I bought the bloody building. But no, because there's, there's feminists. The woman who runs it is a very heavy feminist. She won't have anything to do with me. What did you say that made them hate you? That women could be equally as violent as men. That was from the beginning. Erin Pizzi says that 62 of the first 100 women to enter her refuge were just as violent as the men they left and violent towards their children. But there's levels of violence, isn't there? I'll tell you something. I'll deny the fact that I'm violent. Well, I, I, I'm violent. Mm. So am I. You know, I'm very violent. And yet, verbally, I, and, you know, I could quite easily hit somebody. Mm. You know, very, very easily, and I've had an argument. But the feminists I've met have an entirely different take on domestic violence. On the whole issue of domestic violence, uh, that's just another word, really. It's a cleanup word about wife beating, because that's really what it is, or dating violence. Uh, and it's not girls that are beating up on boys, it's boys that are beating up on girls and using violence to intimidate and to control. And we have very few what's called domestic This lady literally pisses me off. Mm -hmm. How she just like completely dismisses that it happens both both ways mm -hmm. it's like domestic violence it really should just be called wife beating right, like, what like women can't hit you're gonna completely ignore access. right the thing just said the, the stat is one out of three women are gonna be in domestic violence but one out of four, four men are gonna be in domestic right, that's violence. a pretty close that's not that far off exactly yeah that's this <laughs> this is crazy like i said this wife is, man. She, is, she is pissing me off 
smug smugness is mm -hmm. just like oh domestic violence shelters which are places that women can leave their home with their children and get a new start get out of the violence but they're not nearly enough of them we need more funding and more what? resources because it it is a tremendous um disadvantage for women and girls women and girls what about the sons she just hates hates the mm -hmm. male species mm -hmm. In 2014, the CDC released a report revealing that over 5.4 million men and 4.7 million women had been victims of intimate partner physical violence within the previous 12 months. Mm. But then why does the media paint domestic violence as a women's issue? Well, it's more men. Mm -hmm. The World Health Organization says one in three women are abused by their partner. One in three American women experiences domestic violence or stalking at some point in her life. And when it was addressed as a men's issue, the speaker's point was that it's a men's issue because men are the problem. I'm gonna share with you a paradigm shifting perspective on the issues of gender violence. I don't see these as women's issues that some good men help out with. In fact, I'm gonna argue that these are men's issues. Why is domestic violence still a big problem in the United States and all over the world? What, what's going on? Why do so many men abuse physically, emotionally, and other, verbally in other ways the women and girls and the men and boys that they claim to love? What's going on with men? Let's grant every single empirical case as being true. Yes, it is true. Let's just say, I mean, it is not true, but let it, let's just assume that, that there is gender symmetry in, gen, in domestic violence. That women hit men as men as much as men hit women. If, if, if I were to say that, I would say, and therefore we need boatloads more funding for domestic violence to develop shelters and adequate interventions, because there's this hidden epidemic of men who are being beaten up by women. Or I could say, as the men's rights movement do, therefore we shouldn't have these shelters and we shouldn't fund them because the women are all lying. Well, it seems to me. That's not and what they're really saying. Believe in gender right. symmetry. It's not that you want to. You're not questioning the, the number of women. You're just saying the number of men is not. You would want to join with women who are anti violence to say, we have a real problem here. We're not joining you know, with liars. It's not even a gender problem. <laughs> it's a problem of women hitting men and men hitting women. We've got to get boatloads more funding. Let's work together. That's now, mm -mm. how could I how could I join with somebody like that mm -hmm. when he's not even acknowledging that the numbers are exactly. real? Mm -hmm. He's already starting his premise with let's say that these numbers are mm -hmm. true, even though they're not. This was published by the CDC. Mm -hmm. Like this was not just some random journalist mm -hmm. who put together his own little study somewhere. Mm -hmm. Like, no, these are actual numbers that have been actually reported. And these are just the ones that have been reported. Right. And most don't report it. Men, most men are not going to report this. Exactly. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, men are becoming a little more. You know, yeah, but still. But still. Right. You know. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy, especially knowing that that they're not going to be believed. They might not only will they not even be believed, they might get mocked and shamed, mm -hmm. and they're the victim. <laughs> right. They do. Yeah. They do get mocked and shamed. You got beat up by your girl? Mm -hmm. Yes, she had a skillet. Mm -hmm. She had a cast iron skillet and she right. hit me on my head when I was asleep. Right. After like, I woke up from being unconscious, that's when I realized. Right. Like like it's it, like a woman being smaller doesn't make her less mm -hmm. dangerous. I'm going to keep saying that. Like just because a person is smaller, like there have been children that have killed their own parents. Like mm -hmm. just because a person is smaller doesn't make them less dangerous. Mm -hmm. If they have a will to do it, then they'll find a way they'll to do it. They'll find a way. the logical response to this. But instead, they're saying it's like a zero-sum game. If, if we fund the women, then we're going to ignore the men. Well, we're not, ignore, not going to ignore the women because we all agree that the levels are as high as we say. Hmm. She like, hmm. But it does He's sound like keep a zero-sum game when only women are receiving services in Facts. domestic violence situations. And of all like he literally just counter contradicted himself because mm -hmm. if you look at the way it is now, that's what's happened. Mm -hmm. He's he's afraid that the men are gonna do what the women have already done, mm -hmm. which is only there's only women shelters, there's only outcry 
off of women violence. You see, you saw the posters mm-hmm. and the billboards that show a woman beat up, but you don't see it the other way around. Mm-hmm. So all the things he's saying has happened already, but it's happened the opposite of what he said. Mm-hmm. So, hypocrite. The men's rights activists I've met, none of them question the number of female victims. Exactly. They are calling attention to the high number of male victims that are being dismissed. So why aren't men's rights activists and feminists working together? Michael Kimmel briefly said something that made me wonder. He said it would no longer be a gender problem if both men and women were equally victims of domestic violence. Mm. Is that why the number of male victims are never addressed? To me, it's been fraud for all these years. Why is it we have this enormously powerful feminist movement and virtually nothing for men? Originally, it was capitalism was the big enemy in the 60s and 70s. And it was the radical feminists in America. They moved the goalposts. They said, no, it's no longer capitalism is the enemy. The enemy is patriarchy, all men. And that's how the women's movement began. And it was enormously successful. You notice that the original issue was capitalism. Mm -hmm. When we talked about how feminism is a Marxist movement, Mm -hmm. they try to act like there's the the different waves of feminism. It just got worse and worse and worse. But really, when you look at it, the original intent was to dismantle the family unit, dismantle the the, uh, capitalism, Mm -hmm. and introduce Marxist ideology right. socialism right they're just going according to their plan yeah like it's just yeah the logical conclusion mm-hmm. like oh so men are now the problem mm-hmm. it's crazy these folks are psychos the new mood in in the refuges were was going to be that no man could work in refuges and can't today they can't sit on the boards and boys over nine or possibly 12 can't go into refuges or you call them shelters their mothers have to make other arrangements for them, mm. which I find shocking. Mm. And it ring-fenced money. I think that that particular time when the feminist movement were desperate for funding because they'd run out of, of publicity and they were desperate for funding and they needed a just cause. And it, unfortunately, it fell into their laps. It's an enormous industry. I mean, violence against women they get something like was a billion and over a year. Mm. And an awful lot of that goes on really supposedly rehabilitating men, but essentially punishing them with something that's called the Duluth model. Duluth Power and Control Will. You guys know about that? No. I'll give you a copy. In 1977, I think, a bunch of crazy women up in Duluth, Minnesota figured out they had the solution to domestic violence, and it was all about patriarchy and all about men. And it's the Duluth power and control wheel. Because men are all about power and control. Of course, not you ladies. You guys, you don't control anything. You have no power. You're just sweet and innocent little things. Okay. <laughs> so when this power and control wheel is divided up in all these things, you know, about who does this and who does that and blah, blah, blah. Of course, it's all men. entire domestic violence industry was founded on, on that. I think it's still 37 or 32 states in the United States that by law they have to use the Duluth model for better intervention programs and it's all shame, blame, and guilt driven. Mm-hmm. If you're a man and you walk in, you must admit you did it up front or you're in denial. There's no debate. There's no discussion. There's no possibility that you could be falsely accused. The criminal justice system could have made a mistake. None whatsoever. You are in a state of denial and you will complete that course or you're going to go to jail. Mm. You will be re-engineered. It's frightening. <laughs> frightening? Yes, that's frightening. I think it's terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. All I had to do, I had a simple choice. I could just say, yes, you're right. Men are the enemy. No problem. But I couldn't. I absolutely couldn't. 
All right, we'll stop it there. This has been part seven of the red pill. Any final thoughts? Yes. <laughs> digging deep here. Dig. They, they're they're really digging deep. Yeah. They're they're painting a clear picture about the inequality that men have mm -hmm. here in America. Like this, this lady really did a good job with this documentary mm -hmm. and putting this together and taking you through the snowflake right. of men's rights issues. Right. Well, what did y'all think? Did y'all like this content? Do y'all like this series? We will keep this series going if y'all continue to watch it. Uh, hopefully, we can make it to the end of this of this documentary. <laughs> it's pretty long, but yeah. we've seen that people are liking the content. They're liking our comments towards it, and we just appreciate y'all watching. Make sure you uh, support the channel by like, sharing, commenting, and subscribing, and also clicking the donation link in the comments. And if, if God puts it in your heart to give, go ahead. God bless.